As always, I have a new game to play this week, but before the review, I just have some housekeeping matters to take care of. So last week I talked about how I've never played a UFC game before, and I apparently did a few years ago, and so I apologize for that. I completely forgot about it. Don't know what it says about the game, though. And also make sure to subscribe, like, comment, watch more of our videos, see more of our stuff, and let me know what you think. So now let's get on to the review. I decided that sports, you know, weren't really for me, so I went with a different style of a beat-em-up. Uh, Warriors Orochi 3 Ultimate. Now the best way to describe this game is it exactly the way that it was formed, actually. It's like if you took Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors and, you know, forced them to have a baby. But instead you put it in a different name that still sounds really cool and make it about a combination of historical China and Japan fighting together. You know, as, as it actually happened, even though the eras are a thousand years apart. Now, they did plenty of spin-offs of the Dynasty Warriors idea like this one, as well as plenty of others. I've actually done a game like this before. I remember this one. Uh, I'll admit, I didn't play the first two games in the series, so I have no idea how the story was going there about how these two, essentially, eras were put together. But it definitely does feel like they decided to include every major warrior in history for those regions in this game. I guess that makes sense. Um, and that would be an understatement because I'm not going to say who, but the game does feature appearances from characters from other games who would fit into this sort of hack and slash idea. I only have a week to play each game, and I know that I've barely touched the surface of this one. Like, I've, I've barely touched the Warriors part of Warriors Orochi 3 Ultimate. I know very little of the plot, so I can't really spoil it, but let me let me just point out the, the prologue stuff to you, so let's see if we can all get this concept. You are fighting a battle, you're losing it, and then you're saved by this mystical person being thing, and you have to travel back in time er, repeatedly to save people who died so then you can fight that future battle, but sometimes you have to go back in time to redo that same fight because you saved a person earlier, and then you have to go back forwards to save them again because they died in a fight that you didn't think they were going to die in. Okay, if that makes sense at all. I'm, I'm totally confused by it, but it's a lot of fun, and there's all these different move combos you can do with your, your hacking and your slashing and your slashing and your hacking and all these different things, but uh, you can just button spam, and it'll be fine. It's definitely got a lot of gameplay to it. I mean, everything I've seen online, you it takes about 120 to 150 hours to go and perfect this thing, so I can't say there's a lot of replayability, because it's going to take a very long time just to go and find everything. So that means you're going to need a lot of time to unlock every character, and every item, and everything needed. And... It's, it's a grind that takes like true dedication to go and do, and that's why I'm probably not going to end up doing it. It is very time-consuming, as I said, but it's definitely worth it if you have that time to at least play through the story. I mean, I have a week, I've, I've had a week so far, and I'm, again, barely touched any of it. So you'll, you'll need a few weeks unless you want to just try to attempt to speedrun a game that takes 120 hours. So good luck. For next week, I just don't want to start to feel like I'm going to burn out. I mean, this whole experience is like paradise. Like, that's all I can say about it. But that's all for this week, so just remember to stay inept, people.